welcome to Christchurch. I'm David Hall, the vicar here, and I'm standing next to our new curate, <laughs> Nick Wolf. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions in a moment. Uh, just one or two notices, though. First of all, thanks so much for joining us for this service. We really appreciate you being with us, and we hope and trust God will bless you. Uh, one or two things I'll, I'll mention here. A big thank you to the people who have been doing our daily devotionals, which are continuing. Uh, doing a real blessing. We're getting lots of feedback from people who find them very helpful. So a massive thank you to all those involved in our daily devotionals. Why not look those up as you go through the week and have a little bit of help and strength uh, as you journey on. Um, also, uh, Detonate, delighted at the Detonate Children's <laughs> Initiative. It's absolutely full at the moment with a waiting list. 240 children uh, coming to the Holiday Club uh, this summer. We'd love more leaders uh, to help with that. So do contact our church office if you can help with the Detonate initiative. It's right at the start of this school holidays uh, in July, and uh, it's running for a whole week. And as I said, it's full of kids, but we'd love more helpers. As well as that, there's a new book just out called The Book on the Common. It's by Gillian Pugh, and it details all the wonderful things that have taken place over the years at Christchurch School. You can get copies of this book uh, from, Christ, uh, from uh, Chorleywood Bookshop, uh, and we hope to get some here as well at church, mm -hmm. and we'll let you know when we get those. Well, Nick, a very warm welcome to you. Um, kind of fresh from being on retreat, fresh from the Abbey, newly ordained curate. Um, now, we'd just love to know a little bit about you, if that's okay. Um, tell us, first of all, about your family and then any hobbies and interests you've got. Yeah, okay, so uh, I'm a mother of three children, Reuben, Naomi, and Sophia, and married to Phil. And in fact, uh, two of the children go to Christchurch School. Uh, hobbies. Uh, I love horse riding, I love animals in any shape or form, I really like music and I like food quite a bit as well, so... <laughs> so these are pretty strong things here at um, Cholly, <laughs> aren't they, in terms of uh, ministry, so uh, there's, there's, there's great, great potential there. Good. Um, and um, uh, tell me also, before you went for ordination, what sort of work have you been involved in? Yeah, well, I've had quite a random career, so I started life actually as a performer, and went uh, trained as an opera singer and was an actress and then I moved into setting up my own leadership coaching company a long time ago using all those skills from acting to help leaders stand up and look amazing when they present and more recently for the last five years I've been CEO of a Christian charity called Be More which encourages people to really give and be generous and now I'm here utilizing all those skills well, that's excellent. That's valuable background experience um, before you joined us. Uh, what sort of things can we pray for for you? Yeah, I, we would always love prayer. Thank you. Uh, I think just the transition of mum being going into curacy and uh, maybe just for the family to just adjust to this in the best way possible. For us to be blessed as a family would be lovely as well. And just so, uh, yeah, we, we're all so excited to be here. So I guess just we'd love to just embrace this opportunity to serve and worship and learn with you as much as we possibly can. Well, we're delighted you're joining us, you know, uh, both in your ministry capacity, but also as a, as a family. We look yeah. forward to getting to know you all very well. I'd love to pray for you now. Let's, let's, let's pray and uh, support Nick in this important step. Oh, dear loving God, uh, we thank and praise you so much for all that you have done in Nick's life and in her family's life up until this point. And as she steps forward into ordination, into ordained ministry, we pray you'll take all those skills, those gifts and abilities, and you will channel them into the blessing of your people. And we pray for the whole family at this time of transition. You, we pray that you will uh, keep them safe and help them with the, all the adjustments required. And we pray for Nick, uh, that you will guide her, you will equip her, and you will be her trainer, her leader, and her guide. And so we ask for your richest blessing to rest upon her, for your Holy Spirit to, to visit her uh, with all that she needs to be a blessing to others uh, and to fulfill your plans and purposes in her life and in her ministry. This we ask for your dear name's sake. Amen. 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 Great. Well, we look forward to getting to know you. Do come up, say hello when you see Nick at services and so forth. Um, and uh, we'll kind of see you indoors. God bless.
welcome to Christ Church. Isn't it good to be together today, worshiping God, learning from Him, being encouraged um, and receiving encouragement in our walk with Him? Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank and praise you that you are the God of all encouragement. You're the God of forgiveness. You're the, the God of, 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 of fruitful work and good purposes in our lives. Please guide us, we pray, by your Spirit as we worship you today and as we learn from your Word that we might see our lives transformed in your grace and power. This we ask for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We come now to the words of our confession. We pause just for a few moments before we join together in the words of our confession taken from Psalm 51. Together. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions, wash away our iniquity, and cleanse us from all our sin. Amen. These words of assurance from Psalm 103. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who revere him. Amen. We stand for our anthem of praise from Psalm uh, 57, verses 9 to 11. Together, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. We remain standing as we worship God together. Some verses now of scripture from Exodus chapter 15. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. Let us praise him as he is rightly owed praise as we worship him together.
We come now to our intercessions. Let us pray. First of all, we pray for the Church of Christ, both in our community and around the world. Loving God, teach us to live the Great Commission as a church, with each of us performing our unique role. Where communities are still enduring widespread impact from COVID and recovering, guide the work of your church family as it builds unity across denominations. Help all who believe in Christ to bring hope, relief, and restoration to our community and our nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we celebrate with Nick and Phil Wolf and Reuben and Naomi and Sophia as they join us with Nick serving as our new curate. We ask that you will flourish their family life and their shared ministry and service of you together. May your Holy Spirit guide their every footstep, protect them from harm, and help them to know the fullness of your love and your truth in their lives and in their work for you at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and lift you the troubled areas of the world where conflict continues. Lord, as we see the world become more unstable, we ask for godly insight for those who are in positions of authority. We thank you for all the vaccines that are being provided and the testing facilities and the increased international cooperation. We ask that you will guide those in authority, that they will influence fair distribution of the vaccine. Help us with all the practical aspects and the economic aspects of combating coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and we lift up to you those in authority within our nation grant to our Prime Minister and our politicians godly counsel and wisdom in all their decision-making. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen. We ask for your protection on our community as society eases restrictions and opportunities to meet up become more frequent. Give us wisdom and compassion in our own choices that we make and help us to help one another on a practical basis as well as also on a spiritual level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, we pray for ourselves. Please protect us and our families. Help us to trust in your unfailing love, to overcome fear and uncertainty with faith. Give us a sense of discernment for your greater plan when our lives and plans are disrupted and help us to show compassion to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer in its traditional, or rather its modern form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our Bible reading, which is taken from Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 33. Matthew 10 verses 16 to 33. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. 
For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant to be like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray that God will help us as we open his word, as we look together at these amazing words of teaching from Jesus. Let us pray. Our loving, merciful Father, we praise and thank you for the work and witness and the redemptive work of your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we look together at these words of his teaching, please challenge us, inspire us. May your Holy Spirit move us, and may we walk more closely in the path that you have marked out for us. And may we be bold and confident witnesses to your redeeming plans for mankind. This we ask for your dear name's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, so we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses uh, 16 to 23. Matthew 10, verses 16 to 23. See if you can get that in front of you in some shape or form. And uh, I will be looking at that now. Well, today's very much a day of celebration, and uh, as we welcome Nick and Phil, Reuben, Naomi, and Sophia into our church family, and we uh, look forward very much to working with them and them sharing very actively in the ministry here at Christ Church. And uh, but we're looking at uh, Matthew 10, verses 16 to 33, under the title, Trusting God When Things Get Harder. Trusting God When Things Get Harder. Now, I know that Nick's got tons of information to simulate over the next week. I just want to reassure her that it's not going to get harder here, at least as far as the curious is concerned. It's going to get easier as she gets to know us all and we get to know her. As far as this pandemic is concerned, I must say, we are very much hoping things will get easier. And I tell you what, I'm not going to miss all the hand gel dispensers everywhere and all the precautions we have to take as we move around the face masks and the track and trace and everything. I'm not going to miss any of that stuff, are you? Someone's even composed a poem about hand gel, just to sort of inject a little bit of humour into the situation that we face on an almost, well, regular, on a multi-daily basis. The poem is called The Viscosity Variable. The Viscosity Variable. The viscosity of hand gel varies quite a lot. This makes dispensing tricky, as you only need a jot. Pressing once in one shop merely offers you a drip. But an equal pressure elsewhere supplies enough to float a ship. Signage is clearly called for. Some guidance that is sound. I suggest a three-tier system. Treacle medium and drowned. Well, maybe things will get better 
uh, pandemic-wise. In our passage, Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's warning them. He's saying that, e he's saying that even though uh, Christ, God's promised Messiah and great deliverer, the fulfillment of all Old Testament prophecy and all the wonderful things that were said just a few years earlier by John the Baptist and so forth, even though Christ will do all these things and he will rise from the dead, uh, he will ascend to the Father's right hand, triumphant, even, all the, even though all these wonderful things will happen, for them afterwards, things would get worse. In fact, one of the greatest proofs of the resurrection is that all the disciples who witnessed the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, of all of them, only one, John, would die of natural causes. All the rest would go to their deaths as martyrs, proclaiming Jesus Christ as risen and one day returning in glory. And they would not have died for a lie. Around 200 years after their deaths, Tertullian would throw out this challenge to all who would seek to eradicate Christianity. Uh, writing in his uh, Apologeticus Adversus Gentes Pro Christianis, that really trips off the tongue, doesn't it? He said this, and this is a translation from the original Latin. I know I don't need to do this for you, but I'm just doing it to make things easy for you. He says this, nor does your cruelty, however exquisite, avail you. It is rather a temptation to us. The more often we are mown down by you, the more in number we grow. The blood of Christians is seed. So when Jesus warns the disciples that difficult times are coming, he does not do so to frighten them. He does it to strengthen them. He says in verse 17, Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to their courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and to the Gentiles. And uh, Jesus warns them that the persecution of Christians would begin in places of worship and it would end in the secular courts. He also says this in verse 21, brother will deliver brother over de death and the father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. Whole families would be divided by faith issues. And verse 22, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. In time, everyone, the Jewish uh, and the Roman authorities, would unite against the early Christians. And yet, the church of God would stand. The Roman Empire came to a humiliating end in 476 AD with the sacking of Rome. And here we are, 1,500 years later. Not even a global pandemic could kill off the witness of God's people. In fact, we are more widespread than ever, aren't we? Online as well as in person. How did Jesus Christ pull this off? What guidance did he give here in this passage to those early Christians, which would help them not just to survive as a movement, but to build God's eternal kingdom, a kingdom that outlast every other kingdom this earth has ever produced? Well, firstly, Jesus says, don't be surprised if things get harder. Don't be surprised. Uh, this week has been a little bit of drama, hasn't there, in the Crimea, with the Russians claiming to have fired warning shots and dropped bombs in the path of the British ship HMS Defender. Was the whole thing a surprise? Well, it was to me. I didn't even know we had a, a warship in the region. Someone wrote to a newspaper, please don't sink our ship. We only have half a dozen. But actually, when I discovered that there were not just one, but two journalists already on board that ship. There was a print journalist and there was a broadcast journalist. Before all this kicked off, I did begin to wonder if the whole thing was a surprise to anyone. Or whether it's like one of those wrestling matches on television where they kind of discuss it beforehand and they decide how it's going to play out and who's going to win and the fact that it's going to be probably a draw. When it comes to persecution, it comes to difficulty for the Christian, Jesus says, don't be surprised. He says this, verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant to be like his master. If they've called the master of the house visible, how much more will they malign those of his household? Jesus is basically saying, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you because you bear my name. So don't be surprised. Secondly, don't give up. 
this whole section from verses 16 to 23, right at the beginning of our passage, um, is all about not giving up. Beginning with these intriguing verses, verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as servants, so be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. There's really interesting imagery here. Jesus sends out, as, out, as, out among, as a sheep amongst wolves. Now, you'd normally expect a sheep amidst wolves to be immediately ripped to shreds and destroyed. But he also says, be as wise as serpents. Now, serpents were considered wise because, one, um, they are more widespread than any other wild living creature. They're on every continent, um, and they're in the sea, they're in the land, and they're even in the air in the sense that they live in trees. Two, they continue to exist in our ever-modernizing world. No matter how many computers we build, no matter how much deforestation there is, snakes seem to survive and flourish. Three, snakes flourish even though they're hated by everybody. Okay? Um, and in many parts of the world, at the first sign of a snake, the whole village will turn out to try to destroy it, regardless of whether it's a poisonous one or not. Jesus also says, be innocent as doves. Now, doves have two qualities. First of all, they are associated with purity and with the worship of God. And they were used uh, in the temple as a sacrifice for that reason. We're told at, G at Jesus' baptism in Matthew 3, verse 16, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Doves also have the ability to fly, to fly above this world, to see things from above. And if you, take, if you take all these three images together with all their rich meanings, and you were to compose a message of encouragement for discouraged Christians, here it's a speculative but legitimate amplification of Jesus' teaching as he uses these three images, okay? Here's a speculative but I think legitimate amplification of his teaching. And here it is. I am sending you into a situation which would normally be expected to crush you. But I am telling you to flourish no matter what people say about you, to extend my kingdom everywhere, to worship me, to soar above this world and its sin, and then look down and see things from my perspective. And don't give up. Don't give up. Thirdly, don't be afraid. Jesus says in verse 30, even the hairs on your head are numbered. I find that verse to be of no comfort to me at all. But there are thankfully other verses that do speak to me great comfort. Verse 26, have no fear of them. Verse 31, fear not. And particularly, and perhaps most unusually, verse 28, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is Jesus saying here? Well, I think it's very significant that he's mentioning hell quite directly. So we cannot deny its existence without denying the words of Jesus Christ. But there is a very positive message here. He's saying, if you have a right respect for God as Savior and Judge, you do not need to be afraid of anyone or anything. Verse 28 means a lot to me personally because it was the last verse that my uncle Luke ever read in church on the night that he died. On the 13th of March, 1941, that day had been a pleasant sunny spring day uh, on Glasgow's Clyde Bank. And at a prayer meeting around about 6.30 p.m. that evening in a small brethren assembly nearby, my 23-year-old uncle Luke rose to his feet. He read that scripture and he prayed. He'd been badly shaken up uh, at Dunkirk, so badly, in fact, that he was on sick leave from the Army Medical Corps, suffering from the trauma of it and unable to serve on the front line. 
But he rose to his feet. He quoted these words from our reading, verse 28 onwards. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. And then he prayed that God would help us and help them, those at that meeting, to have a right respect for God and no fear of anyone else. And at 9 p.m. that evening, with the Clyde Extree bathed in the light of a full moon, so bright, my father said, you could have read your newspaper by it. There was a wail of sirens and then the drone of heavy bombers. And over two nights of bombing, more than 100,000 bombs were dropped, uh, starting fires in every street. And out of 12,000 houses, just seven were left undamaged and 1,200 people were killed. And while the rest of the family huddled in their uh, home, Luke suddenly stood up and headed out of the entrance to help with the wounded outside. And his last words were that he hoped his medical training would be of some use caring for the injured outside. One landmine drifted one and a half miles from the docks and landed near the outer wall of number 78 Jellicoe Street by the railway line, cutting the building in two. And in the explosion, Luke died along with 30 others sheltering in the same spot. But the rest of the family survived. What changed this young man from someone so traumatized by his experiences at Dunkirk that he was still unfit for military service six months later? What changed him into someone who voluntarily ran out into the middle of the bombing to help others? He believed the words of Jesus, and he publicly prayed to God to take away his fear, and God answered that prayer. And on his gravestone, there are two things. On the bottom are the words, redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. And at the top of the gravestone is the regimental emblem of the Royal Medical Corps, which has as its symbol a serpent on a pole, borrowed from Moses, placing a serpent on the pole to bring healing to the people of Israel from the plague. May God also make us as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. So as I conclude, we do not know what the future holds for us. We do not know whether we face further natural disasters or even persecution. But Jesus stands above it all. He has walked this path of suffering and persecution. And the message of this passage, the message of his teaching to us is, when things get harder, trust in him. Don't be surprised. Don't give up. And do not be afraid. Let us pray. Just going to take a few moments now um, to give us uh, a moment for, for personal prayer to God. And there may be something that represents for us a particular fear that we have at this time. Maybe something in the future. It may be something that we're experiencing right now. It may be a situation or it may be a person. Or it may be something just deep inside us that we struggle to recognize. And maybe this is a lovely moment, maybe just to cup our hands and perhaps symbolically place that in these hands and bring this to Jesus. And then I'm going to pray. Oh, loving God, we are very aware that as we follow you, as we bear your name, we go into this world as sheep amongst wolves. Please help us to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. As we trust in you, help us not to be surprised when there are difficulties, temptations or persecutions. 
Help us not to give up. And above all, help us not to be afraid. This we ask for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and in the power of his Spirit. Amen. So in a moment, we'll draw near to having communion together. We come now to the peace. If we're on our own at home, perhaps a good time just to maybe offer our expressions of peace and goodwill um, to others, either in our thoughts or possibly even via the social media. Yeah, let's give thanks to God for those who enrich our lives with their friendship, their fellowship and their love. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace to those around us. We come now to our Eucharistic prayer and our joyful opening acclamations of praise to our risen Lord. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Draw near with faith, eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you, keep you in eternal life. blood of Christ shed for you, keep you in eternal life. We come now to the prayer after communion. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment, we're going to come to our final song during which we take our offering for the work of and witness of our church family, both here in this parish and overseas uh, through our mission partners very far afield. Um, thank you for joining us uh, in this act of remembrance and thanksgiving for all that Jesus Christ has done for us. I trust your faith has been strengthened by this morning's message and by this act of remembrance. Do use the social media or email to send your greetings, thoughts, spiritual encouragements to others. Do also share with us testimonies as well of answers to prayer. It's always so encouraging to hear what God's doing in your life. Um, and uh, if you are joining us in any shape or form from a, a, a foreign country, do mention, if you're able to, the country you're from. It's always such an encouragement to us to know that God is at work all over the world. We come now to our blessing. Oh, loving God, we thank and praise you for this act of remembrance of all that your son Jesus Christ has done for us through his death, his resurrection and his ascension and the life-giving Holy Spirit that he has sent to be our comforter, to be with us always. Guide and help us through this week with all the challenges we face and may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and evermore. Amen.